Rulers and overseers of their respective counties. They are those who are forced to make hard decisions for the good of their people. Some of them have true and noble hearts, while others bear a cold and malice one. They each sit at the hearth of their cities with reinforced cobblestone walls encompassing them. They're considered among the most important individuals within the province. These are the 11 counts and countesses of Cyrodiil. Today's discussion will rank each of the 11 sovereigns in order from most honorable and least problematic to least honorable and most problematic. Each count and countess will have their respective quests, interactions, and citizen-based opinions taken into account. Beginning the list as most honorable and least problematic is Count Ormelius Goldwine of Kovach. Goldwine's placement is tricky in the sense that little is found out about him and his rule in game. He is found dead in Castle Kovach during the quest, the Battle of Castle Kovach, in which he was slain in his quarters by the attacking Daedra. This gives him some credit with regards to the idea that the captain goes down with his ship, and that he did not abandon his people or his city. The reason he's placed at the top of this list is due to unused conversation topics with the head of the Kovach guard, Savlian Mattias. Mattias describes the Count as such. Count Goldwine is the embodiment of nobility. He's always ruled Kavach with a fair hand and listened to the needs of his people. He was a valiant warrior in his day and inspired all of us to be our best. I heard he personally led one of the first retaliations to the attack. But then, things got confused. Even the Legion troops stationed here couldn't hold the defenses. Count Goldwine retreated to the castle, determined to hold on to it at any cost. He's still in there now. I'm sure. That's why we've got to get in there and make sure he's safe. We owe him our allegiance, and besides, he'd do the same for any of us. It seems like Goldwine was revered as noble, strong, and heroic to the people of Kavach. Now, this is all hearsay and one man's opinion, but given the events that transpired, I'm more than willing to believe him. And maybe even for the sake of fairness, we can just list Count Ormelius Goldwine of Kavach as an honorable mention. But on this list, he's still number one, and Kavach needs someone to represent them. The next in line for honorable goes to Countess Norina Carvane of Bruma. The Countess is very well-mannered when first meeting with the player. All of her conversation topics point to her having a positive outlook on the Empire and the city of Bruma. She is the quest giver of Lifting the Veil, which sees the player going on an adventure in search of an Akaviri artifact. She is generous enough to gift the player some gold before the quest begins and reward them with an enchanted ring when it's completed. The citizens have an overall positive opinion of her saying that she rules Bruma fairly and justly. They do mention that at times she can come across as cranky but chalk it up to the overall weather conditions and temperature of the castle. What truly makes Carvane honorable, however, is her ability to calmly cooperate with Martin and the player in the face of adversity with regards to dealing with the Oblivion Gates being opened up around her city. She is respectful to Martin and the player, and due to her willingness and trust in them, ultimately helps aid in the battle against Mehrunes Dagon. The third most honorable on this list is Countess Rona Hasseldor of Skingrad. Rona's positioning is quite tricky, as we don't receive much information on her at all. Nothing is ever explicitly said about how she was as a ruler and what her character was like. All we know is that her and the Count, Janus, were turned into vampires 50 some odd years ago. Since then, she has resisted feeding and all of her vampiric urges, and has chosen a life of suffering and immobilization due to that. She is eventually cured of her condition thanks to the help of the player, but dies due to her weakened state. It is due to her actions of foregoing feeding and resisting her vampiric urges that she gets placed higher on this list. The fourth most honorable on this list is Countess Ariana Valga of Coral. Valga is quite well-mannered and friendly when first meeting with the player. Her dialogue and actions are the same as most other counts and countesses with regards to allies for Bruma. When the Coral Gate is closed, she is very grateful to the player and sends two soldiers for aid. She is highly spoken of by the citizens of Coral, and her rule is even complemented by other nobility across Cyrodiil. She does come off as a bit shallow when the player tries to buy a house in the city, as if their fame is not high enough, she denies them business on the grounds of not being famous enough. Perhaps the most controversial part about the Countess, however, is her demeanor during the quest Canvas the Castle. It's noticed by several of the citizens that her mood has drastically changed when a painting of her late husband goes missing. While her sadness is understandable, she goes on to declare that until the portrait has been found, she will not do anything else. Interpreting this line however one would like, 
I'm under the impression that she literally means her political duties and responsibilities are at a halt until she solves her personal affairs, which demonstrates her true character. The fifth least problematic on the list is Count Andal and Doris of Shadenhall. Depending on one's outlook for Andal, he can either be placed at a higher position or a lower position on this list. All of his greetings and quest responses show him to be a humble ruler. The quest The Wayward Knight sees Andal reacting to all outcomes with a level head and fairly. He even has a relatively civil reaction when he finds out the player murdered his son, if that was the path the player sought to choose. He continues to speak highly and lovingly of his son no matter the result. Where the controversies begin though with Andel is that there are widespread rumors about the death of his wife. His wife recently died while falling down some stairs. Many citizens and other nobility question the scenario, insinuating that he had a hand in her death. Although, this could be through malicious intent as some also question why a dark elf is the count of a Cyrodiilic city. Another rumor, and one that proves to have more merit, is that Andel knows about the Dark Brotherhood sanctuary in the abandoned house. Apparently, he turns a blind eye to it due to threats and bribes from the guild. If this is true, and again, it stands likely to be, this would certainly move him down lower on the list. But, everything is hearsay and just rumors, so nothing can be proven otherwise, and that's why he's in the fifth spot. The sixth most honorable and least problematic is Countess Malona Umbernox of Anvil. When first meeting her, she has a fairly tame greeting but does test the player a bit by telling them not to cause trouble. She speaks very highly of the Empire and of the city of Anvil. Her response to the allies for Bruma Quest is the standard dialogue of not being able to send any reinforcements until the anvil gate has been closed. Once closed, she is very thankful towards the player and sends two soldiers for aid. The citizens speak highly of her and commend her for governing the city so well after her husband mysteriously disappeared many years ago. Where her rule gets controversial, however, is that during the quest, The Ultimate Heist, Count Corvus Umbernox, her husband, who mysteriously disappeared 10 years ago, shows back up with the player and comes forward to her as the Grey Fox. He then renounces his life of crime and rejoins her at the seat of Anvil. Malona Umbernox so willingly lets his life of crime and abandonment of the city slide. Yes, he is her husband whom was missing for quite some time and finally got to come home. Yes, they are in love. As well, perhaps the argument could be made that Corvus was forced to become the province's best thief. However, her inability to further question his abandonment of her and the city should raise questions of their own. Furthermore, she looks the other way to his criminal behavior once he renounces the title of Grey Fox, when it is her sworn duty to deliver justice and righteousness on lawbreakers and offenders. The seventh most honorable and least problematic is Count Janus Hasseldor of Skingrad. To preface, Count Janus is one of my favorite characters in the game, but he sort of deserves to be lower on the list. Hasseldor is a vampire. He has disdain for vampire kind, but nevertheless, he is still willingly a creature of the night and even has inadvertently admitted to feeding. When spoken to outside of quests, he is a polite yet short-spoken man. Many citizens compliment the way he runs Skingrad, yet also comment on him rarely being seen. During Allies for Bruma, he speaks bravely and nobly about not backing down to Maerun's Dagon. When the player closes the Skingrad gate, he shows gratitude and sends a soldier for Bruma. During the quest Ulterior Motives, he comes up quite short and upset with the player, but this is due to miscommunication from the Mages Guild and the Count. During information at a price, however, the player is tasked with ridding a nearby cave of vampires, but, more controversially, also getting rid of vampire hunters. Hasseldor says to get rid of the hunters in any way possible, even killing them if need be. While this is out of necessity for his sake so that he doesn't get made out, it stands to reason that intentionally killing vampire hunters, who are purging the world of foul creatures and are seemingly innocent, is not a morally correct thing to do. The ninth count on this list who is the third most problematic and least honorable is Count Regulus Terentius of Breville. Terentius is overall rude and dismissive towards the player. He speaks incredibly down on Breville and its peoples. Equally, the citizens of Breville speak just as poorly about the Count and his son. He patronizes and condescends to the player while attempting to buy a house. He acts in the exact same manner while introducing himself and speaking about Breville. 
The only time Terentius is respectful to the player is during Allies for Bruma, where his dialogue becomes cookie cutter, where even a normal rejection for aiding Bruma is a better tone than he normally speaks to the player with. His son, Gellius Terentius, is a skooma addict, and while this shouldn't reflect completely on the actions of Terentius, it certainly could have been a pushing factor, as the overall character of Terentius is ill-mannered and self-centered. The tenth count on this list is Count Corvus Umbernox of Anvil. Count Corvus is a strange entry in the fact that the Thieves Guild questline has to be completed for him to become a Count again. As detailed before, he held the persona of Grey Fox for 10 years, abandoning his wife and the city in which he was ruling. While acting as the Grey Fox, he obtained the status of a Master Thief and lived a life based around crime. We don't quite get to see how he was as a ruler and how he currently is as his routine and reputation remains fairly mundane. Before his return though, the citizens speak lowly of him calling him irresponsible and dishonorable. Overall, his actions of abandoning his city and family to lead a life of crime leave him as the third least honorable count. Now this is the final entry for the list, and it's for obvious reasons. The 10th and 11th least honorable counts has to go to Count Marius Caro and Countess Alessia Caro of Leowin. Either can be put in each slot, with maybe the Countess taking the cake for the least honorable and most problematic count in Oblivion. In the Count's greetings and responses to the player, he comes off as fairly stoic and neutral, not really having a strong emotion one way or the other. He offers a few quests to the player in which rewards are handed out. His dialogue for allies for Bruma is also the same that we hear from the other Counts. Close the gate near the city and they will send a soldier or two. The Countess on the other hand shows an outward hatred for Argonians, Khajiit, and Dunmer. She will even go as far as to make condescending remarks to the player if they are playing as an Argonian character. Many citizens believe that she is trying to imperialize Leowin by pushing out Mer and Beast Folk and replacing them with men. Where the real evil and dishonorable actions lie though is within the lower parts of Castle Leowin, there exists a torture room. Moreover, it is explicitly said to the player that this room is used to torture Khajiit and Argonian prisoners, particularly immigrants from Black Marsh and elsewhere. It isn't even fully distinguished by some parties whether the torture victims are prisoners or simply new citizens. The servants claim to be able to hear the screams of the helpless beast folk coming from the depths of the castle. Furthermore, the chatter goes on to say that these victims are never seen again, as they are likely killed as a result of the torturing, or so word won't get out about the heinous activities. Say what you'd like about everyone else's position on this list, but the Count and Countess of Leowin deserve to sit as the least honorable and most problematic. That wraps up the list on the Count and Countesses across Cyrodiil, ranked from most honorable and least problematic to least honorable and most problematic. Let me know what you think of this list, and until next time, keep on adventuring.